In 1981, the United States Air Force recognized the increased threat of Soviet air power and air defense systems. While the F-15 would go on to be the most successful air superiority fighter of all time, it was uncertain to Air Force Command whether or not the F-15 would be truly enough to ensure aerial dominance for the future. With the onset of Soviet aircraft such as the Su-27 Flanker and the MiG-29, alongside growing surface-to-air missile technology in the form of the nearly brand new S-300 battery leveling the playing field more than ever. Instead of hoping the F-15 would be enough in the scenario the Cold War truly went hot, the Advanced Tactical Fighter Program was launched to find a future replacement of the F-15 and make sure the Soviet Air Force would become the victim of mankind's ferocious technical evolution should the Cold War ever turn hot. This program would take advantage of the growing expertise of stealth technology that the US Air Force had accrued with its F-117 program. What would result gave the US Air Force such an advanced fighter jet that it could dominate everything which dared to get in its way for over a decade. Being the first fifth generation stealth fighter to ever exist, it is of course, the F-22 Raptor. The role of the F-22 was simple, provide an air superiority fighter to the US Air Force that would put its foes on the back foot for decades, and in this, they succeeded. Development began in the early 80s as part of the US Air Force's Advanced Tactical Fighter program codenamed Senior Sky, aiming to replace the F-15 Eagle and to an extent the F-16. The ATF was tasked with performing both offensive and defensive counter-air operations in highly contested environments necessitating advancements in fighter design and technology. The requirements of the program were to create a single-seat, twin-engine, supersonic, all-weather stealth fighter aircraft, something the world had never seen before. This program led to a competitive phase, resulting in the selection of Lockheed and Northrop as the main contractors on the 31st of October 1986. Lockheed Martin's Skunk Works Division, which deals with highly classified aircraft production, would team up with Boeing and General Dynamics in the YF-22 project. Originally, there were requirements for short takeoff and landing, but this was heavily relaxed partly to save weight and instead of versatility, the focus was placed on speed, stealth and lethality. The aircraft that could have been chosen instead of the YF-22 was Northrop's own YF-23. There's much debate on which aircraft was truly the better with the YF-23 still maintaining a cult status among many, and it's not hard to see why this competition wasn't so clear-cut, with a large community believing the F-22 was the undeserving successor of this competition, with claims of bureaucracy and favouritism. The YF-23 had superior thrust-to-weight ratio being listed quite high at 1.36, whereas the YF-22 was at 1.08. Despite this, the F-22 had a higher supercruise speed of Mach 1.8 than the former's Mach 1.6. Speculation about the comparative stealth capabilities rages on to this day, with a strong debate on which aircraft was the better with different advantages, but in the end, it would be the YF-22 that went on to be a success, and Lockheed emerged as the winner of the ATF and engine competitions. But which do you think was better? Let me know your reasoning in the comments below Personally, I generally can't decide which aircraft is the better, especially in the terms of looks. Both designs were incredibly futuristic and somewhat alien at the time, and perhaps that may explain the increase in UFO sightings after 1997. That or humanity wasn't the only fan of this impressive pair of aircraft that were pushing the boundaries of mankind's technological abilities. While the Raptor would end up being a success in many ways, becoming an icon of US technological dominance, it would unfortunately not be a completely positive story. The F-22's development faced a number of challenges, including weight analysis leading to significant airframe redesign, but it ultimately introduced cutting-edge technology in areas like avionics, software integration, and setting new standards for its generation of aircraft. 
The F-22's development was marked by technological innovations and faced budgetary constraints, ultimately leading to the production of 195 aircraft, which have become vital components of the United States Air Force's tactical air power. There were originally plans to field over 700 Raptors until budget cuts to the program made this order fall to 381 Raptors and would finally end production of only 195 models, less than a third the original planned number. The issue wasn't that the F-22 wasn't good enough, but there just wasn't anything that seemed enough of a threat that warranted creating more given the high cost of the aircraft. In the early 2000s, the Raptor was simply out of place. It was essentially overkill for the geopolitical world America had found itself in after the collapse of the USSR created a power vacuum for well over a decade, and no other aircraft being fielded to come even close to the F-22. Due to this, it was seen unnecessary to field so many such expensive aircraft, hence the smaller production number of just 195. This production number may have gone on to be something of a curse to the F-22, but more on that later. The Raptor's philosophy is absolute aerial dominance. With a top speed of Mach 2, superior stealth attributes to be seen last, advanced sensors to see threats first, and a competitive agility to engage other aircraft in close engagements, aided by its 20mm Gatling gun and state-of-the-art air-to-air missiles stowed internally. Quite simply, the skies are the territory of the F-22. The F-35 would eventually be created to work in tandem with the F-22 to ensure enemy SAM systems were unable to change this fact from the ground, provided a combined system of fifth generation aircraft that ensured unrivaled aerial dominance. To achieve unrivaled air superiority, the F-22's stealth technology is indispensable, rendering enemy tracking and targeting systems ineffective until the aircraft is well within the lethal reach of its weaponry. This is precisely why fourth generation aircraft stand no chance against this aircraft. Complementing its stealth, the F-22 boasts remarkable agility, owing much of it to its 2D thrust vectoring nozzles meticulously designed for both high maneuverability and stealth capabilities. These 2D nozzles offer a thrust vectoring range of up to 20 degrees in either upward or downward directions. In comparison, Russian 3D thrust vectoring essentially compromises two 2D vectoring nozzles set at a 45 degree angle. While these contribute to improved yaw, particularly at lower speeds, the F-22's substantial vertical control surfaces grant exceptional low speed yaw control. Additionally, the Raptor's 20 degree thrust deflection surpasses Russian counterparts. This translates to unparalleled nose authority, allowing the Raptor to execute precise maneuvers like a 360 lateral skid turn or even execute a flat spin 360 degree maneuver swiftly positioning its nose toward the target. That said, it doesn't even need to do that. With the onset of off-bore sight capability to make weapons such as the A9X even more capable, this means the F-22 doesn't need to directly point its nose at aircraft it wishes to engage. It can carry up to 6 AIM-120C and 2 AIM-9 missiles. This, combined with its high thrust engines and 20mm autocanning, make the F-22 a lethal dogfighter to the point that is often hard to comprehend. This weaponry would truly come in handy when in 2023 on the 28th of January to the 4th of February, a Chinese surveillance balloon flew over the United States, to the internet's apparent delight. It was allowed to reach the eastern coast before it was destroyed. It would ultimately be the F-22 Raptor that was assigned to the official task of advanced popping using a giant needle, or sorry, using an AIM-9 Sidewinder missile. Due to the United States only seeing conflict against smaller groups in a certain part of the world that YouTube doesn't like being mentioned, the F-22 really saw no use outside of ground attack missions. Now, as I've seen regularly, this is often used as some sort of dig at the Raptor's abilities, and especially something I'm expecting in the comments of this very video. While indeed a funny tale, it's simply quite unrealistic to say the only capability of the fighter is to engage a balloon. While that is all it's achieved in aerial combat thus far, this simply doesn't make much sense. The F-22 might not have had the opportunity to engage other air targets, but that says nothing of its capability to do so. In reality, a weapon seeing little use is no tragedy to mankind. That said, 
it is amusing that such an advanced stealth fighter's only true aerial engagement in its history may be against a glorified balloon. When it comes to that stealth aspect of the F-22, it is truly cutting edge. This very technology on the F-22 Raptor is a result of a meticulously engineered combination of various strategies to elude detection. To comprehend this, it's crucial to grasp the fundamentals of aircraft detection involving radar and infrared emissions. The primary method of detecting aircraft is through radar, which emits radio or microwaves in a specified direction interacting with the aircraft depending on its shape. By shaping the aircraft to eliminate any straight reflections back to the source and minimizing 90 degree angles, the initial step towards stealth are taken. Managing the edges where radar energy scatters involves predicting and shaping the aircraft accordingly. Furthermore, special coatings and manufacturing precision are employed to minimize radar returns from surface discontinuities. For instance, serrated edges on maintenance hatches redirect radar energy away from the source. Addressing other potential radar returns involves techniques like coating the canopy with radar absorbent material, optimizing air intakes and shaping the radar itself. The end result is a significantly reduced radar cross-section. Additionally, measures are taken to mitigate heat signatures emitted by engines, exhaust, skin and equipment. Staying subsonic contributes to this reduction too. Moreover, emissions are kept minimal to avoid detection by passive sensors. Advanced radar technology, such as the Raptor's ANAPG-77A radar, further enhances stealth by reducing side lobes, creating narrower beams and spreading emissions across various frequencies, making detection and jamming exceedingly challenging. This multifaceted approach makes the F-22 a quintessential advancement in stealth technology, setting it apart from older generations of aircraft. The claimed radar cross-section of the Raptor is that of a honeybee. And don't worry, I know what you may be thinking, a honeybee travelling at 800 miles an hour is surely going to look different on radar. But the truth is, radar is dealing with so much background noise that such a small object is nearly impossible to decipher until it's much, much closer. So that all said, it's pretty clear why the F-22 has been made a fan favourite for quite some time. It's not only a technological masterpiece, but to many, a symbol of American aerial dominance, and to a greater extent, general military prowess. After all, it has been dominating the skies for many years. But if that's the case, why are they allegedly being retired in 2030? while the 50 plus year old F-15 continues to be a popular choice. Well, that comes down to a number of factors, with the top one being the most obvious, cost. The F-15EX is priced at around $100 million, with the F-35 at around $80 million. The F-22 comes in at a painfully high $125 million. This cost is ultimately due to the previously mentioned curse of low production rates. The economics of scale are a power to behold, and this is why the later, more advanced F-35 built off of the lessons of the F-22 is cheaper in large part to its high production of over a thousand airframes. The production of only 200 odd airframes is the fault of the times the F-22 was created in, a perfectly capable aircraft designed so ahead of its time that it had such little competition that it simply wasn't needed in high numbers. The Raptor is truly a great example of suffering from success. This production factor was also made worse by the ban on exporting the aircraft by the US government. So while the F-35 could be even more of a success as it was sold to the close US allies and therefore cheaper, the F-22 had its wings clipped. Its legacy stealth materials also increased maintenance costs making retrofitting with a more durable modern F-35 ram coating impractical. In terms of obsolescence, the F-22's limited range and soon to be outdated avionics are significant concerns. Its combat radius is considered insufficient for potential conflicts with China, whereas the F-35 boasts a superior range. Additionally, the F-22's avionics are hindered by outdated code and processors require an extensive effort to integrate new sensors, which is unfortunately just too costly to be chosen. Regarding stealth, 
The F-22's agility somewhat compromises its full stealth potential, which is becoming less critical as missile technology advances. Developing a new fighter from scratch allows for optimised stealth against a wider range of radar frequencies. While the Raptor was a cutting-edge aircraft when it was released, it was more importantly a huge lesson. It became the foundation that the F-35 was built upon, this early development a large aspect of why it isn't such a long-life program, something that was made a key priority in the F-35, made possible by the very things learnt on the Raptor program. While in the early 2000s the Raptor could ensure victory in the skies, that is beginning to fall into question as aircraft such as the stealthy J-20 are produced in ever greater numbers. This doesn't mean the F-22 is a bad aircraft by any means, and there's been little information to portray the J-20 as any better in terms of performance. But it's come to the point where the US Air Force has the option to either spend a huge sum upgrading the F-22 to maintain its advantage, but with such a huge overhaul it seems more likely those funds will be going towards the 6th generation NGAD program. The F-22 is yet to become obsolete, but without such expensive overhaul it could well be in the near future. The Raptor was truly an aircraft far ahead of its time, a revolutionary aircraft that pushed the envelope of what was truly possible, cementing the status of US aerial dominance for years, becoming the first fifth generation stealth fighter in the world. While it may have served during a period where it thankfully wasn't needed and played by a low production rate due to lack of need, its legacy will be one that will never be forgotten being the first of its kind, paving the way for future aircraft such as the F-35 to excel. We will have to wait and see how the F-22's replacement, NGAD, will improve on its capabilities. Until then, it seems the Raptor is still one of the most advanced and lethal fighter jets in the skies, and undeniably one of the most beautiful. If, like me, you love aircraft like the F-22, but don't find enough time in the day to actually build models of them, I highly recommend Air Models, who made this brilliant model of the F-22 and was kind enough to sponsor the channel. They make die-cast models of great durable quality, so if you want to get your own, simply click on the link in the description below. After all, no Aviation Geeks desk is complete without one. Thanks for watching, I've been Kubota, and I'll see you next time.